Okay, gang, let me give you guys a little intro to this stream. Okay. To the update that we're about to do to this map. This is map, uh, mapping global conflicts number 19. For 18 global conflicts map that we've been doing, okay, we've been looking at the micro, the situation, we've been talking about the macro a little bit, right? We have maps and talk about how allegiances are, um, are forming and stuff like this. But we've been sort of focusing on who's been funding the war in Ukraine now that we've kicked into Israel as well and the stuff going on in Africa and whatnot, right? The global war, world war, is becoming clear how it's going to be played out, right? So what I want to do in this 19th mapping stream is step away from the micro and look at the macro where we're going to look at the big players okay who the countries are the big players in this game and then maybe start looking at some of the countries that are are the larger countries bigger players than just you know madagascar right and see where they stand right and one of the first places i want to start off with is just do a color code i got stickies right different colors right we're going to use four different colors just the way we did over here where is it where's our map right there four different colors for peace safe areas on this map yellow being civil unrest we used to call a civil war but we're calling a civil unrest and then the orange supporting war and the red in war we're gonna start using bigger maps to map out the larger countries so it sticks out one layer right so we're putting an overlay on this initially i was going to take out all these little guys but i don't think we need to and it's going to take a lot of time taking off these little guys it would take the whole stream me taking these little guys off so i want to take these and just go like this so we know who the major players are in this thing okay to know who the major players are in this thing now again i know there might be some stuff coming my way but i want to finish giving this intro and then we'll start talking about it lay down the first colors and go on it right now after we do this right i'm thinking using pink for one orange for another axis allies if you want to think about it using green for places that want to stay play both sides and blue for places that want to stay neutral stay out of the whole thing they don't want to have anything to do with world war three all right and then from there I want to share some info with you regarding uh, one perspective uh, I developed two and a half decades ago. It was like late 1990s, early 2000s that I read this article. It might have been mid, uh, late 1990s, mid 1990s, as early as mid 1990s, but I think it was either late 1990s or early 2000s, where I read an article talking about world war ii that as soon as the united states joined entered world war ii officially on the side of uk right main one of the main players in europe on the side of uk and went into war with japan that at the time, the perspective was of Churchill, and it was a quote that Churchill made saying, now that the United States has joined our side, we're guaranteed to win the war. The reason being was because the GDP, the combined GDP of the allied countries was more the combined GDP of the Axis, right? And that guaranteed that the allies during world war ii united states uk russia uh, china occupied china italy france whatever whatever country you consider to be the allies were going to win world war ii because their combined gtv was higher right that was during world war ii i want to show you some data regarding gdp and ppt um, purchasing power parity uh, different way of measuring uh, GDP of the countries that we're about to lay out just for us to have a perspective of the resources available 
for either side right but that's just the first step that's a historical step that we're going to take to try to look at how world war three is playing out because the game is much more intricate than that because it's not just about gdp because gdp is a garbage measure anyway right the article that i read was just talking about gdp during world war ii and it was called something something else before it was called gdp gdp came into play i think after world war ii you know they had you know they called it a different type of metric a metric but it was really just the production capacity of a certain country right because it's not just a production capacity of a certain country that decides who's possibly could be um, a more powerful adversary right it's also what that money begets right so for example a hammer in the united states i read this in the early 2000s or something like this pentagon would would be would pay you know 500 dollars 700 dollars for a hammer to be used in their military like overpriced just <laughs> bloated military industrial complex while in russia a hammer will cost you like 50 cents so it's not just about what the gdp of a country is what the uh, ppp of a country is it's also what that money what those funds are able to get you in that country right there's a measurement that uh that i looked into this a, a while ago it came across it hit my radar where people considered you know the wealth of a nation based on the price of mcdonald's in that country what you could buy for a certain dollar value in that country right that told you if the country was, was expensive country or whatnot so we're going to share some of that data as well okay so i just want to lay that um sort of intro to you guys and uh, sort of talk about uh, sort of uh, sort of plan out what we're going to talk about and this stream we're just going to take a look at the gdp and the ppp and then in future streams related to this when we're looking at the macro we're going to look at some of some of the other metrics involved in this between the different factions that are waging war okay <clears throat> 